Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a, a moderately priced reel. I got it from a distributor. Uh, I was asking for some reels that would line up with 10 foot fishing poles for surf casting and others. And uh, he sent me a um, South Bend Mudville Catmaster. It's probably a 70 size, maybe an 80 size reel. It's a ball bearing drive, single ball bearing, but I like the balance on this one. I uh, like the cosmetics, the bronze and the, uh, the gold. It has a long, uh, long cast spool, relatively high capacity, 300 yards of 15 pound monofilament. Uh, nice long leveraged handle here for surf casting. Uh, designed for catfish, obviously by the name Catmaster, but certainly able to be used along uh, the beaches and uh, riverbanks for uh, long cast uh, surf casting. We're going to take this apart, we're going to lubricate it up, we're going to see what's going on inside and uh, show you how to maintain one of these uh, if you happen to have this particular reel or one similar to it. So in order to do that, I like to start by taking off the handle to give me access to the side plate. In this case, the handle has a screw on the, the uh, reverse side of the handle, and it has a uh, through uh, bar that goes through the main gear uh, to act as the, uh, uh, the drive for the, uh, the handle itself. I like to put that screw right back into this assembly so that I don't lose it. I like to put the handles and my other pieces into a parts bucket or a parts tray. In this case, it's simply the bottom of a milk box, but uh, you can use anything uh, as long as uh, uh, it holds all the pieces and parts so that you know where to get them on reassembly. You'll also notice that I like to wear a protective glove on my left hand, my non-working hand. That's to keep the contaminants off of it. Uh, so I'm looking at the side plate. I've taken the, the spool off and I realize that the side plate is uh, partially buried and underneath the rotor, which means we have to take the rotor off in order to get through the side plate. In order to do that, you take the click uh, ratchet and the two retaining washers off the top of the spool uh, uh, shaft. And then underneath that, we have a retaining screw Take that off. That holds that nut from uh, slipping and loosening up on the rotor. And then we'll take the rotor off. And the rotor looks like a uh, 12 millimeter nut. And interestingly enough, in this case, there's directions on this rotor that says off is traditionally the way you would tighten clockwise. So we're going to remove that by clockwise. If, uh, if it didn't have that instruction on there and you're working on a reel like that and you realize it's not coming off easily, then chances are that it's a reverse thread uh, or a clockwise thread uh, rather than a counterclockwise thread. Rotor comes off. Underneath that we have the anti-reverse ratchet, so this is not an instant anti-reverse. I'm going to take that uh, anti-reverse ratchet out right now to give me access to the bearing while we're at it. Uh, notice that I'm going rather quickly on this and, and uh, not stopping or pausing too much, but I would tell you if you're working on a reel like this for the first time, and this is the first time I've actually seen this reel, uh, but if something doesn't look uh, uh, or make you comfortable or, or um, if you're losing your memory on certain pieces, take pictures along the way. Now, interestingly enough, I am taking pictures along the way here. I have the video if I really get messed up. But uh, I would tell you, take your cell phone camera out, take your um, digital camera out, something that uh, would give you pictures at certain points, like when you take the side plate off here, uh, pictures to show you where the pieces and parts came from. Uh, you're noticing I'm switching a couple of different screwdrivers here. It has a, a, a Phillips head screw on it, uh, but it also has a through shaft, and I'm just not finding the one that's gripping that uh, that one the right way, or the easy way, there you go, flat bladed screw. Uh, always helps on your parts tray to have a variety of, of screwdrivers on hand, and also to, uh, to keep it uh, you know, nearby so that you don't have to, to set a reel down, uh, walk away from it, and then find out uh, you didn't, uh, you forgot where you were, you forgot where you put a particular piece or that. That's another reason why this parts tray here comes in the, comes in the handy. So there's one more here we're going to take out. Now I'm just noticing as we take these out that these side plate screws are identical in certain 
uh, situations, manufacturers will put different size screws in, different thread screws. So you need to pay attention to that as you're taking them off the case. All right, so the four are out, and then as I said, this, this little lip here was underneath the rotor, so we couldn't do anything with that. Here's my first look at the construction of the reel. So the construction of the reel we know has a ball bearing up top, and it does say ball bearing drive. It has a brass bushing underneath it, that's good. Now again, this is a moderately priced reel, so uh, uh, I've seen some, and I think one of the ones that we actually did from South Bend a while ago uh, did have a plastic bushing there, so brass is always a better situation than, than plastic. So uh, this is a, a good situation to be in there. Okay, so now we're going to take the spool shaft out. And that's held in with a, a cross block screw. We're going to take that out. That's a Phillips head uh, threaded screw. And you have to take this out and you have to pull a shaft out in order to take the main gear out because this is driven by a cross wind gear in the back here, cross wind block, and then on the back of the shaft here is a cross wind gear. There's so it's two gears here on the main drive. And if uh, you can't pull this gear out because that shaft rides between the two gears here so you can't pull it out you have to take the shaft out in order to, to do that and that's a common practice on many reels uh, so here's an interesting piece to pay attention to if you have this reel this one has an anti-reverse lever that's operated by a spring off of that main drive you can probably just see it or barely see it here I'm trying to find something that might show that up a little bit better Try this. So there's a little spring that's on the back of this gear. You should see it this way. Little wire. That wire belongs inside of this notch that drives the anti-reverse gear. If you miss that notch, you, you lose the anti-reverse. So always good to pay attention when you see that. And I'll show you how to reinstall it in just a moment. So the gearing on this ball bearing brass shaft, I like that. That's in good condition. We're going to go ahead and oil the bearing. I always oil bearings. I use a Real X oil. Any uh, any oil designed for fishing reels uh, will work fine. And I'm flooding it uh, nicely. I'm not sure the last time this reels had a had a good drink. And then we're going to go down and we're going to put some grease onto the, the pinion shaft. And I use a uh, in this case I'm using a pen precision reel grease. But any manufacturer's reel grease, including third parties, uh, works fine. We're just going to make sure we get a good amount of grease onto that pinion gear. The, uh, the back of this, we want to check to make sure all of the teeth are in good condition on both the cross wind drive as well as the main gear drive, which they are. We'll just go ahead and put a little bit of grease on that. It seems like this reel has a good amount of grease on it already. I don't, I'm not seeing any, any dirt or anything else of consequence here. And then we can go ahead and reinstall. So how do we reinstall with that little wire thing? We line the wire up with this peak hole, uh, which is a nice circular cut through here. And that's a sighting that enables us to put the main gear in and, uh, and look for the notch in the anti-reverse uh, to make that true. So here we go. We'll just take a quick look there, quick sighting. And we're in. So that's how that works, and that's how you, that's why you have that hole in the main gear for those of you out there that were wondering why that uh, is the way it is. All right, so we, we have a clean back. We can put a little bit of grease on the back of this. This is a cross wind block. We also put a little bit inside, and we go and put that over the notch. Trying to center that up there. Okay, we're set on that. And then we just want to drop the 
the shaft through. We can put a little bit of oil on, uh, a little bit of lube on that shaft. Now the shaft has got a notch in it. You want to make sure that the notch is to the front as we bring that down here. And we need to just see that. I oiled that shaft up and now I've got a, a little bit of a situation where I can't grab the shaft to get the leverage through. Okay, and we want to go back into our parts bucket, find that little Phillips head screw that belongs on here. So I'm seeing a quality reel here. And I'm seeing one that uh, for a price point is a, is a nice reel. It's going to give you plenty of service here. And it's going to enable, uh, enable you to do some long casting in the surf. Uh, particularly for some long, uh, long fishing poles like the 10 footer that I had uh, inquired about from the uh, distributor and uh, I like what I see here. So we're kind of reversing the process out now. We've done the lubrication of the pinion gear, the main gear, the cross wind block, and the cross wind gear. Uh, go ahead and put a little bit of uh, grease back onto the uh, main shaft. Make sure that the bushing is seated properly inside the side plate. We're going to go ahead and put the side plate back on now. That just snapped in nicely. It's always nice to hear a nice sound for that. And here's another reason why that parts tray works so nicely because you can make sure that you have all the pieces and parts that you took off going back on the reel and that you didn't leave something behind. So uh, it's always a little bit tough when you just try to act in by memory and all of a sudden you realize there's a little spring in there, there's a little retaining clip, there's something else maybe. Uh, that wasn't properly reset. All right, so I'm driving the uh, side plate screws home. Some uh, folks have asked me along the way, can we use the mechanical screwdriver for side plate screws? I don't recommend it. Uh, if you uh, if you have trouble with your hand strength, if you have trouble uh, turning the screwdriver or the like, then go ahead and use it. I would recommend low speed, low torque on the way out. And on the way in, I would recommend you stop short of the final turns and go ahead and use the manual screwdriver to finish the, the turning there. Okay, we're going to take that. Now we're going to go put the anti-reverse back on. We're pretty set there. Take the, the, the drive. But this isn't the exact sequence that I took them out in, but uh, the lower end is, is done now, so it's no problem putting that drive back on. Just want to make sure that everything turns smoothly. You don't want to cross strip screws, and I've seen that the, uh, the handle screw gets cross stripped quite a bit for whatever reason. Uh, folks just assume maybe that they've got it set and they over tighten and then it just uh, it ruins it. Okay, back to the, the, the rotor. The rotor goes on. Remember when we took the nut off now, that off was on the traditional clockwise rather than counterclockwise. So to put it back on, you turn this nut counterclockwise. And you can finish that off. In this case, this is a 12 meter, millimeter nut. Go ahead and finish that off. set screw. It's going to hold that nut in place. And that's to stop the rock from, uh, the nut from loosening and getting a rock in the, uh, the rotor itself. Now we're going to come back in. We can put the ratchet on, the anti-click ratchet for the spool that lets you know that the, the drag is engaged. And we'll go ahead and put these Retaining clips on top of that. 
again both of these have that D shape so you just got to line it up with the, the D shape in the spool shaft itself. Now before I put this on, we're going to go ahead and, and take a look at these drags. In order to do that, you remove the spring clip from the center. This clip rides in the channel inside the, the uh, spool. And then we can take these out. We'll figure out what we got in here. Okay, so we have, it appears to be felt washers. And it appears that these felt washers have become very dry. So we're going to take these off gently. I'm not sure where you get parts for South Bend reels. So we're just going to make sure we don't tear these on the way out. And uh, one way to do that if you're, if you're having a little bit of trouble, because this one will press down here, is to go ahead and use a utility knife to get it. There we go. Now, th so this is an example of why you maintain reels on a regular basis. These uh, these washers are felt washers. Felt washers require oil to stay flexible and to maintain its performance. If that oil dries, what you wind up with is kind of a cardboard thing and, and some friction. So I'm just going to go ahead and just take some of that residual that seems to have stuck to the washers off. I'll do that with steel wool. This is a 4.0 steel wall. It's not very abrasive or coarse. It's, it's suitable for cleaning and it looks like it's just the one side there. So we'll go ahead and just do that. Okay, so now we oil the washers to maintain the flexibility. We'll just give that a good soak here because it hasn't been soaked. And I noticed the sequence coming out. It was a felt washer followed by a metal washer, another felt washer, and then in the main gear, in the middle always, we have the eared washer. Another felt washer with a good, good drink there. And these will come back to life quickly. So as long as you didn't tear it, uh, there's not too much trouble to be had there. Once we do that, we can go back, take that clip and reset that back in here. And again, this rides in the channel inside the spool here. You want to make sure that the clip sits in the, the channel across. In this case, I need to just make a small adjustment there. Okay, we got that in. And there's, there's no real function to the clip other than to hold the washers in place. The drag knob is the one that does all the tension. Okay, once we have that, we just come on back in now line that up properly, put the drag knob on, and we have a tuned up reel. So what did we see? We see we got a nice reel, moderately priced, single ball bearing. The bushings are good. They're, they're a brass, uh, brass bushing, brass pinion, a nice smooth operator. So this one's ready to go fishing, and it's a nice reel for the price. So. Uh, if you have one of them, I hope you took notes in terms of how to tune that up. I uh, saw some of the consequences of not tuning it up in the drags there. Uh, if you have a similar one, uh, you'll, uh, you know, these, uh, these, this format is very similar to a uh, Shakespeare reel, for example. Uh, the, the tips and techniques go beyond just this particular reel, and uh, it'll help you keeping your reels going for a long time to come. Just remember that little peak hole there with that uh, spring, too. You won't get an anti-reverse, as we have here, unless you uh, sight that little spring and make sure it's into that notch. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.